The story of the elemental battle armor is one that we've covered before on the channel. However, the development of the iconic Battletech battle armor didn't end with the arrival of the clans in the Inner Sphere. Today we're going to look at two upgraded versions of the classic elemental design. So go pop some Sea Fox brand popcorn, sit back, cuddle up with a Sidco mate, and enjoy the show. Now we've all heard the heartwarming stories of the brave elemental landing on a battle mech, tearing armor panels, and eventually reaching the squishy mech warrior inside. Now while that makes for an excellent bedtime story for young children, remember there are other uses for the noble elemental. Both the Elemental 2 and 3 variants, which we're going to talk about today, reflect an appreciation of those other possible applications of armored infantry. As much as it pains me to have to say, we have to give Clan Hell's horses a thanks for both the Elemental 2 and 3. Though Clan Wolf retains the honor of being the first to field the Elemental, Clan Hell's horses took the proverbial ball and ran with it. It makes sense considering how the horses embraced vehicle and infantry combat as an essential part of their tumen. As a jack-of-all-trades battle armor, the standard elemental continues to be a potent fighter even up into the Clan era. Not being ones to leave good enough alone, the Hell's horses decided to upgrade the design to meet a more specialized role as ground-based support that could keep up with vehicles without having to take to the air. Some elementals complained that relying upon the jump jets to travel faster than that 10.8 kph put them at risk as opponents learned to target them at the apex of their jumps. Now this was the primary motivation behind removing those jump jets entirely and boosting the battle armor's land speed in the Elemental 2 prototype. Equipped with a new battle armor myomer booster system, the ground speed of the Elemental 2 is improved to an eye-watering 43.2 km per hour. That's four in your tabletop game. Let's take a second to imagine the look of surprise on the faces of the first Inner Sphere soldiers to witness the elementals running at them four times faster than the expected speed. Yeah, that's the good stuff, Quaff. Now, while this does technically violate MechFrog's rule concerning battle armor and jump jets, it's more of a guideline than a steadfast rule, and that 4 MP movement speed is incredible for battle armor especially since that Myomer booster also improves the damage caused by leg and swarming attacks by two points per trooper. The implications for mech warriors who aren't able to get away fast enough from that Elemental 2 are horrifying. While it's true that the Myomer booster makes it impossible to use the hidden unit rules, this is a small price to pay to see your opponent have to completely rethink his or her strategy while staring down a wave of AP Goss rifle wielding Elementals running at you like Olympic sprinters. And while we're on the topic, the price of the Battle Armor Myomer system is paid for with the jump jets and the detachable SRM missile launcher. It's interesting that this path of development removes the two things that the Inner Sphere Battle Armor researchers were obsessed with obtaining. To each his own, right? Additionally, the heat generated by the Myomer system makes the Elemental 2 easy to see in infrared scans, which is worth noting if you plan on using them in Operation Sneaky Sneak. Without the missiles, the Elemental 2 relies upon that AP Gauss rifle with 20 shots mounted on the right arm. It's important to note that unlike the original Elemental, the primary weapon is attached to the forearm rather than taking up the entire arm. One of the most common complaints about the original Elementals was the difficulty in climbing when the battle armor had really only one functional hand. With the Elemental 2, both hands are basic manipulators instead of battle claws. While this has the downside of not being as powerful when it comes to ripping off armor panels and getting to the mushy bits inside tanks and mechs, the upside is that the Elemental 2 pilot is much more dexterous and can lift and carry objects with a natural grip. In the left hand, there's an anti-personnel mount, which can carry the usual litany of weapons that can help the average infantryman reach Valhalla quickly. Field reports indicate that Hell's Horses Elementals prefer shotguns or flechette weapons, which is very offensive if you are a German standing in a World War I trench. Beside being useful for limiting casualties in an urban environment, it's also slightly easier to hit your target with such weapons while you are running really fast. The Elemental II went into production and the Hell's Horses used it to great effect against pirates within the occupation zone. Those bandits and pirates that had gotten used to hit and run raids were surprised by the Elemental II's ability to chase them down and enter into interpersonal negotiations quickly. The field reports show success across multiple environments, including the urban cityscape, where the battle armor's agility is given the opportunity to shine. 
Of course, as the years passed, research into new applications of the Elemental platform continued. The Elemental 3 is more of an upgrade to the original Elemental than an evolution from the two. It retains the original Battle Claw and a single shot SRM2 on a detachable pack. Upgrades include basic stealth armor, which renders the user nearly invisible to most scanners, including infrared and active probes. Movement and jump capability matches the original elemental, and the armor remains a 10 plus 1. The three primary choices for weapons on the elemental 3 are an AP Gauss rifle, a flamer, or a micro pulse laser. All three very deadly choices. The combination of stealth armor and that AP Gauss rifle would make for an interesting opportunity to do considerable damage to standard or even battle armored infantry units from a good distance before taking any return fire. Field reports from the Elemental 3's capabilities have been positive and even exceeded expectations in some situations. In one notable use, the Hell's Horses point commander named George fought in a trial against the 14th Russellhog Dominion PGC on Brubin. The zealous warrior was able to grapple and then destroy a 50-ton Ursus II and do significant damage to a 70-ton Grizzly before he was too injured and his suit was not functional enough to continue. So impressed by his performance, the Hell's Horses spared no medical expense in healing George back up to full health, though he would from then on have an icy blue replacement eye. What I'm most impressed about concerning these three versions of the elemental armor is that none of them completely render any of the others obsolete. There's something timeless about that original elemental battle armor, and kudos to CGL for recognizing that. While there are some even more specialized battle armor designs from the clans, which we'll probably cover in the future, there's something about these three that just feels perfect. If you agree, cheer in the comments. If you disagree, armed rebellion against the channel. Let's go. It's, it's go time. Short video today, but I had to do it after I was reminded of the Elemental 3 in a video comment. Big thanks to those who come by for all of this nonsense. Hit all the buttons if you want to see more. Channel members, you rock. Go fight people, you're awesome. We'll see you in Discord, as always. Take care, and go make the world a slightly better place today and tomorrow.